Samantha Susi is a graduate from the Santa Okide, a massage therapy school in Gatineau, Quebec, and also and is also a certified Reiki practitioner. She is also my sister. Uh, I'm lucky I get free massages. <laughs> Uh, Samantha is passionate about learning how complementary treatments and therapies can help people reach a higher level of well-being. She feels as though becoming a massage therapist has been the most rewarding career choice she has made in her life so far. She is presently working as a certified massage therapist at the Melbourne Spa in Chelsea and loves what she does. She has told me that when she is working as a massage therapist that it doesn't feel like she is actually working. She also shares her passion in helping people feel better and discovering new experiences with her life partner, Eric, who is also a certified massage therapist at the Nordique, and he is sitting here with his son now. Samantha hopes the one thing you take home today is to follow your intuition, to listen to what your body is telling you, just like Linda had said previously, and keep searching for different treatments that help make you, that help make you feel good. Samantha? Thank you, Linda. Well, I'd like to, uh, first of all, uh, thank everybody for, uh, for being here and also for having me. And uh, for starters, I'd like to see, um, by show of hands, who has had a massage before? Oh, a lot of people. Wow. And also raise your hand if you have experienced um, an increased sense of well-being from your massage. Pretty much everyone had that. Um, so, some of you may be wondering, um, why should I see a massage therapist? Or what does massage therapy have to offer? So, today I'll be discussing the benefits of massage therapy and how they can improve your overall sense of well-being, decreased stress, and, um, and other benefits. Um, I'll also, also be discussing what to look out for, some precautions to take, and basically things to think about before and while you're going through the process of being treated by a massage therapist. Um, to those of you who try to dis, um, who, who, oh, sorry, to those of you who decide to try massage therapy for the first time, and to those of you who plan on continuing this type of treatment, I would like to just advise, um, share one piece of advice, if I may. Um, like Nana said, always follow your intuition and uh, really listen to what your, your body has to say. And um, pay attention to have your, how you feel while you're receiving a massage, after you're, you've had a massage. And don't be afraid to talk to your massage therapist about uh, any concerns or discomfort you may have before or after a massage. A good massage therapist will take the time to listen to you and to respect what your needs are. Um, if you feel like you're being rushed in and out of an appointment, that's not a good sign. Um, you want to really have a, find a therapist who will speak to you, listen to you, uh, make eye contact, things like that. So these are just a few things to, um, to be aware of. And um, now before I begin, I also wanted to clarify that massage, therapist, uh, massage therapy is not recommended for everyone. Because of variable factors, whether or not you should re receive a massage depends on your specific health situation. And there are also some contraindications to take into consideration. Um, sorry, I have a <laughs> um, During an MS exacerbation, the body is going through a lot of activity and processing a lot. For some, it may be best to wait until after a flare-up to receive a massage. Although for others, it may be okay, even beneficial. So, because there are many different factors to take into consideration, um, I think trial and error is, uh, is the best way to go. Um, there's no one that can tell you, um, yes, go for a massage, it'll be good for you. Um, it really depends on how you're feeling that day and, um, and how you react to it as well. So trial and error is, for me, the best way to figure out what type of massage is good for you. And there is no protocol uh, for massage therapy. Um, so again, it's really, it really depends um, how, you, how you react to receiving a massage. If 
you request of the consulting one or more uh, health professional for MS treatments and symptom management, I strongly encourage you to communicate with all other professionals which other treatments you are um, you're receiving. So whether it be reflexology, acupuncture, um, specific diets, medication, etc. Um, one treatment can influence the other. So it's good if you um, open up those those doors and discuss with one professional that you're seeing another because they can one can have an influence on the other. And uh, one thing that massage therapists can do, not a lot of people know that we can do this, but um, we can actually ask you to sign a consent form, which is a simple form that both of you sign, uh, the massage therapist and, and yourself, um, giving your therapist permission to share and communicate um, with other professionals. So whether they be a nurse or a chiropractor or a nutritionist, so that really opens up uh, communication between the professionals, and then um, it'll it'll just make things better um, to be able to help you better. Um, I'll invite you to take note of any questions or comments you have, and um, at the end I'll do my best to uh, answer any questions you have during the question and answer period. And for now, um, I just have a brief um, definition. What does massage mean? Massage is the manipulation of superficial and deeper layers of muscle and connective tissue to enhance function, aid in the healing process, and promote relaxation and well-being. So that's a basic uh, definition, I just found it on Wikipedia. <laughs> you can look up lots of information about massage as well online. And um, when we speak of massage therapy, um, when, uh, when we're speaking of complementary or alternative medicine, Massage therapy falls under the category of manipulative um, and body-based treatments. So it's the same category as chiropractic treatments and reflexology. Now for the benefits. There are lots of benefits. and I'm, I'm not going to mention all of them, um, but I guess the um, basically massage therapy can have an influence on your physical body and also your emotional um, your emotional self and psychological self. So some of the physiological benefits are increased relaxation, um, decreased tone in the muscles that are rigid. Um, so by relaxing the muscles, um, you will you will experience improved circulation, um, redu redu reduced um, stiffness in the joints, enhanced immunity, improved digestion. So there are lots and lots of um, of of physiological benefits to massage therapy. Also increased flexibility and, and mobility. Um, you can view massage as, as a type of exercise. You'll be stretching uh, tight muscles and um, maybe even helping to build up strength in muscles that are not as strong. So um, that can be seen as uh, exercise. Um, when you receive a massage, um, you also release endorphins. So they're known as the feel-good hormones, so um, that's the body's natural way of, of killing pain. So that's another, another good benefit. Um, improves the uh, quality of your sleep. Does anyone, after a massage, just want to go home and go to bed? And you sleep like a baby? <laughs> and some of the emotional and, and um, psychological benefits are definitely the most important is stress and anxiety relief. Uh, to me, that's, that's the biggest one. Um, it lessens depression as well, improved uh, mood and self-esteem, improved body and um, self-body image and social functioning, and helps you develop a more optimistic look um, on your life. Um, also an increased body, mind, and soul connection. And there are many more. Uh, like I said, um, if you've had a massage, you can you can name a few as well. There are, there are many, many benefits. Um, I like to view massage therapy as an exchange, not just a passive reception of a service. So as a receiver, to a certain extent, you have the ability to control how beneficial a massage can be. How can I do that, you may ask? Well, I have a little um, imagery for you. <laughs> just imagine that you're uh, getting ready to walk a dog. So this dog is on a leash, but the dog refuses to budge. You're pulling it, you're pushing the dog, you're calling the dog, but nothing happens. 
the dog will not move. So the walk that you plan on taking with this dog will not be beneficial for the walker nor the dog. In fact, it might even be uncomfortable and frustrating for one or both parties. Someone may even get hurt. <laughs> so now imagine yourself on the, massa no, on the massage table, sturdy like that dog, and not wanting to move. That's just, um, for me, just to kind of um, explain how um, speaking from experience, the extent to which the massage can be beneficial depends on the receiver's ability to surrender. So just letting yourself go and, um, and just be open to, to, uh, to the benefits that can, uh, that can happen. So if you've never had a massage before, you may be anxious, worried, or uncomfortable, and that may limit yourself, um, and therefore the, ex the experience can be less beneficial. Being nervous to a certain extent is normal if you've never had a massage before, but eventually, um, after a few minutes or so of massage, um, if you do relax and let go, uh, then it increases your ability to, um, to be able to open up and see what's going on in your body. And um, some people come out of a massage and they say, uh, wow, I didn't even know I had pain there, but you actually, during the massage, I, I, real, I didn't realize the pain was there, and now it's even gone. So um, that's just because before a massage, some people um, haven't, haven't taken that, that, that time to, uh, to focus on what's going on in their body. And uh, to me, it's, uh, I view massage therapy as a gift that you offer yourself. It's time that you're taking for yourself to be silent, to pay attention to what's going on in the mind and in the body, and to help you figure out uh, what you need to feel better. Because after a massage, sometimes um, you realize that you had you know, pains in areas that you didn't know you had. So it helps you figure out um, what you need in order to feel better. And by doing things that favor the body-mind-soul connection, you're allowing natural healing to take place. And you're working towards reaching your fullest healing potential. So always listen to your body. Now, if you've never seen a massage therapist before, what do you look for in a massage therapist? How do you uh, try and find the right massage therapist for you? So these are definitely um, some things to look for. You want to find a massage therapist who is a member of an association, who is empathetic, who you feel you can trust and who you're comfortable with, and who maintains a sterile and clean environment. Um, so those are a few, there are some, some others, but uh, basically those are, those are the most important. Um, and somebody who listens to your specific needs is, uh, is also very important. Someone who's non-judgmental and flexible, um, and who's understanding to your true vulnerability, somebody who, who listens. Um, for some people, the first time you receive a massage you may be uncomfortable or, or awkward, um, but I can reassure you that uh, for other people that's not that, the case at all. Recently, um, I massaged a 65-year-old gentleman. It was his first massage of his life. And uh, when he came out of his massage, he said, wow, that was the second best experience of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh dear, I'm not gonna ask you what the first best experience was. <laughs> his wife, who had had a massage like beside him, came out of the room and she was embarrassed because she knew, obviously. He, said, he looked over at her and winked and he said, she, know what I, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> So see, for some, it's not that bad. <laughs> if you've had a massage before, um, oh wait, sorry. Okay, when you um, arrive at an appointment, carrying your worries or expectations or preconceived notions about what a massage entails, um, keep in mind that you, you are bringing your, your baggage to the table and that your massage therapist is also bringing their baggage to the table. Sometimes um, people just don't click necessarily. So what you really want to do is find a therapist who you click with in that sense that when you, you have good communication and that, um, 
you feel definitely comfortable with. Because it is something that's very intimate that you're, you're going to be sharing. You're going to be removing clothing, um, and they're going to be touching your body. It's, a, it's an intimate um, setting, if you will. And so definitely somebody who you feel you can trust is, is very important. Keep in mind also that every massage therapist is different. Um, two massage therapists can take the same course uh, with the exact same teacher, but the massage that they perform can be two completely different massages. Also, you can choose one massage therapist who you're comfortable with one day. Um, you, you see this massage therapist and then you say, oh, I really like that massage, so I'll go back and I'll go see the same one. But depending on your health situation, again, like I mentioned earlier, um, this the same therapist can um, do the same massage on the same person, but it can have a different effect on your body. Um, so really just pay attention to how you're feeling that day, that moment, just before the appointment, um, or as just a few minutes before the massage. Talk to them about how you're feeling and tell them, tell them exactly what your specific needs are, and they'll be able to, uh, they'll be better equipped to be able to help you out. And, okay, some of the precautions, so just some things to look out for. Um, it is crucial that your massage therapist adapts a professional attitude and they fully assess your health situation each time you visit. Because the symptoms of MS can vary uh, and, and can be very unpredictable, um, it is important that your massage therapist asks um, health, pertinent health questions before each massage and that you'll have a file with a health form and you'll update it together. So if there's any change in your progress, they'll note it down. If there's anything to be avoided completely, um, that'll, that'll be taken into consideration as well. Be aware of uh, massage therapists who make unrealistic, unrealistic healing claims. If ever you hear the words, oh, I can heal you, or I can help you uh, cure the disease, um, be wary. <laughs> we all know that uh, there is no known, known cure, but just even preparing for this presentation online, I came across some websites where um, there are claims out there that massage therapy and different treatments like acupuncture can cure us. But just be aware of that, that uh, healing, yes, um, treatment, yes, well-being, of course, you'll feel better. But um, when you hear the word cure, beware. <laughs> um, never give money up front. Some massage therapists will say, um, well, you can um, pay me before, a few weeks before, a few days before the massage. Never do that either. A massage should be paid for immediately before or after the massage, never too far in advance. Also pay attention to the cleanliness of the therapist's working environment. Is the room clean? Are the sheets clean? Um, do they wash their hands before and after each massage? So the sheets obviously have to be changed before and after each massage. Um, and also, uh, just keep in mind that infection um, can, can, exa can exacerbate the, systems, the, sorry, the symptoms of MS. So to keep that in mind um, when, you're, when you're in the room, actually. And avoid receiving a massage if your therapist is sick or has cold or flu symptoms. Don't be afraid if you notice that your massage therapist is, is blowing your nose uh, to postpone your appointment because it's not a good idea to be uh, exposed to somebody who is sick like that just because you don't want to get sick yourself. Also, um, short sessions may be good for you. Normally, massages are about 60 minutes. Those are, that's the, um, the most common. Um, so if you're booking at a place where they offer 60 or 90 minute massages, maybe um, discuss having 20 or 30 minutes of massage and then maybe taking a break. So you can get up from the table, walk around a little bit, stretch your legs, um, and then lie back down again to complete the massage. So maybe another 20 or 30 minutes. I know lying down for, for 60 minutes um, can be painful. Um, so that's something that you can discuss with your therapist as well. Um, however you organize your time is really between you and your therapist, so that's another thing to be discussed. Um, some people may be fine to even receive 90 minute massages, so um, that's again, really depends on your situation. Um, and here are some things to keep in mind um, in order to prepare sufficiently for an appointment. Um, so, the, the, 
And just keep in mind that the uh, appointment doesn't start when you arrive at the spa or at the clinic or, or even private residence or hospital. It begins on the phone. So you can um, give as much pertinent information uh, that you can over the phone and that can save a lot of time and complications later on. So mention that you have MS, if you have reduced mobility, if you need a ramp, um, any, any pertinent information that can make things easier that you can mention on the phone, please do. Especially if you're calling a clinic and they have uh, specialized personnel, so maybe massage therapists who have done special courses, um, they can even have the opportunity there to say, well, I have a client here who has MS, who am I going to um, book them with? And then end up, you can be booked with possibly a massage therapist who's specialized. So that's another option. Ask about cancellation policies. Um, a lot of places have 24-hour cancellation policies. Has anyone ever come into uh, have a situation where they had to cancel last minute? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes if you have to cancel less than 24 hours before your appointment, you'll be charged either a cancellation fee or you have to pay for the full massage. So, um, and in some places we'll take a credit card number uh, when you make your reservation so that they're insured to be, to be paid if you have to cancel the morning of. So one thing to, uh, one suggestion that I could make would be to, um, to, to discuss this with your therapist because we all know if you have MS, um, your symptoms can, can all of a sudden appear in the morning. You might have trouble getting out of bed, you might be in a lot of pain, um, whereas that night before you went to bed feeling fine. So maybe discuss this with your therapist. Um, and you might be able to negotiate something with them. For example, if you make your appointment in the later afternoon, let's say at 4 p.m., and um, at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning, you're not feeling well, you can phone them right away, and then that gives them time to rebook that, uh, that time period for somebody else. So, uh, so again, that's just something to look out for, for the, the cancellation policy. And now, different types of massages. Well, there are a lot, over 80 different types of massages. Um, some of them might think, well, a massage is a massage, but no, there are a lot of different approaches, and uh, that's why I invite you all to try different types of massages. So, for example, the Californian, that's the type of massage that I do. The Swedish um, is another very common type of massage. The hot stone therapy, um, is to be avoided if you're sensitive to heat. I know uh, the heat can increase inflammation, so again, if you are sensitive to the heat, um, then you want to avoid hot stone therapy. There are some massages that have cold stones, so the cold can actually um, decrease inflammation, so that's another thing to, uh, to look into. Um, if you're not sensitive to the cold, again, it really depends on how your body reacts. SLN is a um, is a relaxation massage, lymphatic drainage, myofascial, myofascial release, and self-massage. Self-massage is, um, is very interesting. You can, there, are, there are even books that you can buy on self-massage, and that allows you to stay home if, you don't, if um, you're not able to go out and have a massage in a spa or in a clinic. Um, this can teach you different techniques that you can do on, at home and that uh, maybe a friend or a family member can do for you at home. So um, that can just help you release tension and, uh, and again reduce pain and all those other good benefits. So, um, I have a few references here for those of you who would like to explore massage therapy a little bit more online. Um, and there are also some phone numbers I have up here that you can look into. Um, and I have a few quotes as well, right there. So basically, um, I just invite you all to explore the different types of massages that are out there. And, um, and you can read about them, you can phone the different uh, spas. Also, there are some hospitals that have massage therapy, so you have to contact the hospital directly and ask if they do offer certain services. And um, I'll be available at the end as well if you have any other further questions. So thank you very much.